Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Suzanne May and this is Suzanne May Artistry. Uh, today I'm all gussied up in my no, no makeup face day, but I am. This is how I paint. This is the real me. So when I'm doing painting on a Saturday, I like to get all my paints together and um, I've been planning this piece for quite a while. So this one's for my house. It's going to be a four foot by eight foot piece. Uh, and it's going to be a diptych, so two four foot by four foot canvases. And we're going to combine them together um, using hopefully a great composition. So we'll see what happens. Um, I've been planning this piece for a while um, and I have my colors selected and I will be doing a test run before because I don't want to waste a ton of paint just in case I've got my mixes off. Um, but I'll go ahead and share with you the colors and where I'm at with the piece and then um, when we start pouring, I will go ahead and show you the pour. So let me show you the colors. Oh, I dropped you. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, the colors, well, the mixtures that I'm using today. So uh, I'm using the GAC 800 uh, medium to prevent crazing and to extend pouring. I'm using Liquitex pouring medium predominantly, but I ran out, so I used a little bit of this Pouring Masters pouring medium for the paints that I knew would go well with it. Um, and then I'm using Floetrol, um, the, the orange cap variety, easy latex. And so the colors today uh, is the Pouring Masters Peacock Pearl metallic paint. I've made two 15 ounce containers of paint for this. Um, and the ratios are one, one to one of the paint to Floetrol. And then I uh, added Liquitex pouring medium and the GAC 800, just a splash of GAC 800. No water on that one because this one's a really thin, thin paint. The next color is this really pretty kind of gold color. You can kind of see it's kind of a yellowy rose gold because I've combined two colors on this one. I use the Metallic Masters, or I'm sorry, Modern Masters Metallic uh, Satin Finish Paint with the color Iridescent Gold. It's very yellowy. And to tone out that yellow, I wanted to add a little bit of rose gold by Deco Art in their Dazzling Metallics. Uh, so I combined those two colors in equal parts and then added uh, the Floetrol and Pouring Medium and GAC 800 and no water on that one as well. I like my metallics to be a little thicker. Since this one's going to be really thin, it might get lost in the painting, so I might have to figure out how to thicken that a little bit, which I might use a little glue for, <laughs> which I hate using glue, but uh, it is a nice thickener. Um, I can also use a, I think I have a... Um, a sergeant's pearl that I could thicken it with possibly as well. Um, then I have the metallic ma uh, modern masters uh, with the satin finish um, in sorry in the pearl white color. Um, so that's just a nice. I think that will be a nice brightener in the center of my piece. Uh, again, same mixture. Then these last three, I have mixed them with water as well because these are heavier bodied paints and so I wanted to thin them out a little bit but they're conducive to allowing water uh, because they're super pigmented. Uh, so Golden's Payne's Gray, um, Viridian Green by Arteza, and Amsterdam's uh, Permanent Blue Violet. Beautiful colors, very bright, vivid on the canvas and they'll come through in an interesting way when you mix these together. Uh, so that is my pour, my paint that I'm going to be using to do the straight pour portion of the painting. And so this is for two paintings when I do. I'm making a lot. Okay, and then I have my base uh, pores for allowing the pearl texture that I'm looking for. This one is a bunch of bench scrapings. I've done a, a lot of pearl paints, paints, uh, trials and samples, and basically I end up with a lot of bench scrapings from them because it takes a lot of extra paint. So what I'm going to do is combine these to make a lovely kind of like blue, 
pearl paint background maybe a lighter blue kind of a mix between these two colors I think so I'm going to mix them together to get the base color that I need and this is going to go around the edges of the paint um, and create those cells that pop up through the paint that's the solid color to kind of create that continuity between the two paintings and then I'm going to do a white base as well with artist loft white the Valspar cabinet furniture satin enamel and then a little bit of the deco art satin enamel just for a little insurance um, these are done in a one-to-one -one ratio and uh, so with float trawl which is a three three to one <laughs> so um, if I was to break it down in ounces this would be one ounce one ounce and then three ounces of float trawl and then I would just you know put a couple dollops of that in for fun <laughs> and then I have half ounce of GAC 800 half ounce of Liquitex pouring medium I would mix them all together and then I would thin it to whatever consistency I'm looking for with this paint now because I'm doing a straight pour I don't want to thin these out too much um, because they're um, you know we need them to get through the other layer of paint so I might make my paints a little thinner on the straight pour than I normally would to balance out these bubbles that we want them to come up when the paint gets thin enough around the edges so that is the plan but I ran out of Floetrol and pouring medium so I need to go to the store and grab those in order to finish mixing up the bases um, but that is the color palette um, the idea is that it's gonna turn into a piece that I've done and let me show you what that piece is it's gonna look something like this where the white pearls are coming up and the blue pearls are coming up that's that pearl paint and then the middle is what we're calling the the straight pour um, except for I'm going to inverse it I'm gonna put the blue on the outside and the white pearls on the inside this time and I want to try to make some continuity between the pictures so I'm gonna figure out how I want to connect those together maybe in a long flowing strand we'll see but um, it's gonna take some planning and that's what's next okay so now you know what the goal is now I'm gonna prepare the rest of the paints and the canvas and get it ready to go for pouring um, I'll probably do I think I'm gonna have to do them at the same time in order to get the flow correct of how I want the paint to flow through um, or I'll have to just put the blank canvas next to it and create kind of a drawing on the next one if I have time to do both I'll do both but I don't know if I'll be able to do them at the same time in one day it takes up a lot of space in my garage <laughs> and uh, you know they uh, they take a while to dry as well so I want to make sure that I have ample room for them to dry and um, then I'll show you guys what's going on but I'll film the painting process as well so let me go ahead and get set up I'll be right back Great. here we are the uh, canvases are ready I've got two four by four canvases prepared I've had the second one covered still because I might not get to it today but the one that is prepared has uh, tape on the bottom and uh, feet supporting it I have prepared the canvas so that it's taut and I'm about ready to do the pour to prepare for the pour I have my white base ready my blue base ready these are going to cause the pearl interactions and then I've prepared my jar of paint where I've layered the paint um, all the colors cream green gold teal purple and a dark paints gray look at the top how pretty it looks all right i'm gonna get my um gloves on and we're gonna just go for it oh my gosh okay let me set you up on the camera
First one's drying. Here's all the pretty colors coming in. Beautiful pearls in a sea of green. Yeah, coming along, drying nicely. We'll see how much more pearls pop up as the painting begins to dry. 
that the big pour number one is done. We'll start number two. Okay, here's the dried results of the first piece. Look at the beautiful pearls on top, kind of a mountain ridge in the middle, and see at the bottom. Let's take a look closer. Looking at the top, you can see all of the pearls, how they've grown, and colors mixing with the blues and the whites and the green and the dark. Moves into the purple tones as it's mixing with the paint, going along the top of the canvas, and it cascades down. And then we have this green section that divides between the green and the teal, where it almost looks like a mountain range. I might try to carry that through in the next piece. And then it moves into like earthy trees and blue water. It's, it's becoming a very mountain earthy kind of vibe for me. Uh, so I'm excited to see how the second piece turns out its companion and see how I can get them to connect. Um, should be very interesting. Very cool. And this of course is unfinished. I need to do touch-ups and pronouncing the composition a little bit more with paint touch-up. But this is the first dried view. And I'll work on it in here as I connect the two pieces together. There it is. Let's get going on the next piece. Hey, we are starting round two today, the second painting. Here's how I layered my cup. And this is the order I did it in. White, green, gold, purple, teal, uh, Payne's gray. And then I repeated that three times. So a total of three layers. <clears throat> and the top, I just drizzled what was left. So. Not exactly a total layered pour because the paints aren't, you know, too bad, but they are mixing nicely. So they'll be a decent mix. And then we'll have our white and custom color blue uh, base coats. So let's get pouring. Okay, so here's where the second or the first painting was. And as you can see, um, I'm on the garage, so everything kind of went this way, <laughs> downhill. So I've prepared this time to have my um, boards in place. As you can see, it's still a little wet. Some parts are dry. And of course, I didn't waste a ton of paint. So there's like a, quite a few um, paint skins here that I could pull up if I want to, um, to prepare the painting for the next round. Um, so I'll go ahead and peel up the excess paint, make sure it doesn't spill down my garage, and then I'll move this canvas over here to start recording.
closer to the side which you can see very well in the painting. It is forming these really nice cells in this fun water type view. Lots of fun texture and interest in the painting. Lots of depth on this side. You're getting a lot of the blue coming through and the whites, and I think more of this will fill in. Really cool looking. 
hopefully it'll look good as a companion piece to the other. I'll put them side by side shortly when they're dry. Okay, here they are, all hung up and dry, and I picked one direction to go. Can I give you an idea what they look like? And then from a scale perspective, <laughs> let's bring you in to see the dried results. Come in this way to the 4x4. Four four. Some fun colors coming through. Slide into the second. There you go. I hope you enjoyed following along in this little adventure. <laughs>